Hello and welcome in the city center of Warsaw. This is the place where the main character of our meeting spent first half of his life. We are very close to the place where he used to live, where he walked every day to school and also where he performed piano or even the organ concerts. My name is Aleksandra Bobrowska, I am a pianist and today and for the coming days I will be telling you about the life of Frederik Chopin because he's the main character of our stories and I will be playing for you at Chopin Point Warsaw, a place where you can listen to daily live concerts. You're more than welcome to join me for this journey. Hello, uh, welcome again. We are in Chopin Point uh, in the room where we usually run concerts, but today I'm here to tell you a little bit about how the piano is built and what you can find once you open this book of music. But beforehand, let's focus on the most important part of our meeting, on the music. Let's have a listen to two pieces. I will not le um, let you know the title first. Let's listen to it and then please guess whether the compositions are written by Chopin or perhaps someone else. If you know this, please write it down in the comments below this video.
So I'm really curious about your comments and about your guesses. Um, if you know the title of the piece, not only the composer, please don't hesitate to write it down as well. But let's move on to the main uh, point of this meeting. So let's discover how the piano is built. As you know, the contemporary piano consists of quite a large keyboard that has 88 keys. Let's have a listen how they sound like. This is more or less the whole keyboard. And as you noticed, um, this is huge um, array of different colors and sounds that one can take from and build beautiful composition. The bass register is pretty heavy in sound. It can sound very strong, but also it may sound very scary, like a thunderstorm coming. And once we move to the upper register, the soprano register, it sounds more like birds singing, perhaps. Naturally, it's pretty soft. It may sound harsh as well, but from its nature, it's pretty soft. Actually, the differences between different registers come from what's inside this huge machine. So once you look, there are strings and in the base register, they are, they are much longer and very thick. If you look into the upper register, the strings get very, very short and very thin. Uh, there are actually three strings per key, but it doesn't make it that strong as this one huge, solid, thick, long string in the bass register. And what's very important, keys don't finish here, actually. Once you look inside, you see that this key and all the keys, they continue until the hammer inside. When you look at the hammers, they actually last until this white hammer. There's another element you see here on the strings, and this is um, this mute. This element mutes the sound once it's played. So this is the mute that stops the sound once it goes down on the strings. But actually, what do you do if you want the sound to last much longer than just, you know, pressing the key, making the hammer work and hitting the strings and then just immediately having the mute going down on the strings and just killing the sound, you know, stopping it from, uh, from lasting. There are three pedals that we can use to adjust the length of, of the sound. Well, not all of them are ad actually adjusting the length of, of the sound, but especially the one of them, the right one, helps a lot. Because once you press it, you can play whatever you want. And you see, my hands are above the keyboard and the sound still sounds. This is thanks to the right pedal that actually moves all the mutes up and enables the strings to sound as long as you press this pedal. Once you release it, all the mutes go down again and there is silence. There is also this metal pedal that is very peculiar because it stops only the first sound or only the first chord you play. So if, let's say, I play a chord, then I press the metal pedal, it makes this chord last, but everything else 
that I play is very short. There is also this other pedal, left pedal, and it makes piano sounds more gentle, more delicate, more soft. So that would be my normal chord if I press the left pedal. It sounds slightly softer. So this is all about the contemporary piano. More or less that's how it's built and how it works. But uh, when it comes to pianos from Chopin's time, they were completely different instruments. First of all, they were still under construction. Uh, they were developed every, every single year uh, to become more uh, effective. And also, they were built for slightly different purposes because they were built for small spaces like salons, for example, and our contemporary pianos need to be very strong in order to deliver the sound to huge spaces, big concert halls. That's why we have plenty of metal elements inside. Our pianos are bigger. We have many, many keys, many more than back in 19th century. Also, keys are wider and we have developed so many different ideas inside this machine, let's say, that enable us to fill in um, huge concert places with strong sound. Um, in 19th century it was not the case. They were more into intimate playing. All the pianos that Chopin had at that time were mainly wooden and it gave them very unusual, very beautiful, soft sound, a completely different musical world from what we have nowadays. Moving on, I would love to show you how the musical score looks like, because this is something that many of you might not, uh, might not have an opportunity to uh, look at before. So this is, for example, my music book of Chopin studies. And there you go, we have plenty of elements. There is this upper stave for the right hand, also a lower stave uh, for the left hand. They are joined together with this sign. And also left hand is usually notated in a bass clef, right hand in the treble clef. There are many additional signs added. For example, uh, you can see this sign and another very similar one, like this one. And these are called sharps, and this one is called a flat. And of course, uh, sharps, they make sound uh, sharper. So if we have C, then we have C sharp with a sharp. And if we play C with a flat, we have C flat. So it sounds completely different, although it is notated in the same space here on the stave. We have plenty of other signs, like here. We have meter, three, four. It tells us uh, how many beats in a bar we have. Also, we have dynamics like pianissimo here, so it means very soft. Fortissimo there, it means very strong. We have these long signs, they mean legato, and there are also some dots here that mean staccato, so play separately. Legato mean, means uh, play together. And as our title says, um, we ask the question how to bake a delicious a musical a composition, delicious musical cake. Uh, I would say that this is a book of our recipes and we add a lot of these elements to our musical forms in order to compose a beautiful piece of music. Because every musical form consists of all these elements. In every musical form there is a rhythm notated. We have to know what rhythm the composer had in mind when he composed a piece. 
Then we have melodies written down, for example, like this melody of Chopin Mazurka. And also every piece of music has its harmony, usually in the left hand. Every piece of music has its dynamic. It means we have indications whether we should play it soft or loud. For example, let's listen to this first beat of the piece that you've heard in the beginning of our meeting. When played piano, it sounds like this. When played forte, it changes the character dramatically. When played legato, it sounds like this. And when the articulation, another element for our musical cake, changes into staccato, it also changes the character of the piece. In almost every musical piece, there is also a tempo indication that is indispensable because thanks to this, we also get to know what character uh, the composer wanted his piece to to be in, what tempo, what speed. There are also another indications, for example, like Italian dolce, for example, or by the way, Italian dolce means sweet, or another uh, indication, scherzo, for example, it means um, a little bit, well, joyfully, let's say. Um, there are plenty of ways composers indicate what the character of piece they want uh, to be played, what tempo they want to have. And all of that put together makes a very delicious musical cake. It's almost the end of our meeting today, but I would love to give you a task until we see each other again. Uh, please, in your spare time, have a check what uh, musical forms were used by Chopin. Because he composed many of musical forms, like for example, this etude that I showed you, he has written many of them. Uh, he also composed preludes or he wrote some sonatas. And there are many other musical forms that he used. And I wonder if you could actually find some of them and also for particularly curious musical lovers, I have another task. You can find and write down in the comments below what musical form Chopin never composed. Because there are some he actually never used in his musical writing. And this is all for now. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. And for now, 